1963, Marvel published The Avengers. This was a collection of some of the characters that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby had been pulling together in their solo titles. Stan Lee had the bright idea of let's bring them all together in one. Um, this was a start of a franchise that has been absolutely a billion dollar franchise. I'm going to be reviewing every number one issue of the Avengers and how it fared, how it was relevant to the times and what it all means, starting with the original, which we're going to do right now. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, we're looking at the Avengers, and in this case, I'm doing a little bit of an experiment where I'm going to take every single number one issue uh, relaunch of the Avengers as it's gone through time, and talk a little bit about what went on in this issue, how they were similar, uh, how some of the same themes were approached from issue to issue, and what really kind of was the great part, the bad part, and, and how they measured up together. Now, The Avengers, as I mentioned, 1963, this book came out. It starred Thor, Ant-Man, Hulk, Iron Man, the Wasp. Uh, what was funny is, uh, you know, a couple things in hindsight. This comic lists uh, The Avengers, 12 cents, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. I mentioned before, Stan Lee had this great idea. A lot of other uh, theories, at least, that uh, people like Jack Kirby had just as much to do with bringing them all together. But this was a cool issue, and it's interesting to note that this issue of, of 22 pages, basically, is much smaller than the number one issue that would relaunch some 30 years later with Heroes Reborn, uh, was double the size, but you feel like you've got a lot of comic in this, an incredible amount of comic, actually, for, for 23-odd pages. Uh, pretty impressive, really. Um, one thing right off the bat, it's kind of funny, uh, the cover, we list, you know, the Amazing Avengers. There's, there's five of them. Um, there's Thor, Ant-Man, Hulk. Iron Man, the Avengers, it's like we're forgetting somebody. Oh, it's the Wasp. <laughs> Back in old 1963, um, you know, the, the, uh, the progressive <laughs> aspect of making sure that the female heroes were actually featured was not really high on anybody's priority list, it seems. But uh, we, we go right into the issue, and this is a kind of classic Stanley Kirby um, the place, Asgard, home of the Norse guards, the time, the present, the man, Loki, god of evil. Loki was set up as the initial threat to the Avengers and somebody who would kind of poke at them. Uh, definitely coming in from Thor. Thor was kind of the, the big gun in this comic. He was the one who was having a decent amount of success. Iron Man, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, the Hulk were definitely, they had their pieces. The, the main marquee draws here, though, were Thor and Hulk. They were the ones that were, were doing well at the time. And so it made sense to have Loki here. So Loki is, you know, he is ex exiled and he wants some revenge. Um, this is a theme we'd see repeated to a large extent uh, many years later when the, the title first relaunched. But they check in on, uh, he, you know, Loki's peering at old Dr. Don Blake, who's, who's uh, you know, dealing with sick kids. And uh, it looks like he's giving him a shot. But anyway, he's, he's doing his thing as a doctor. And he's trying to figure out a way to, you know, cause some mischief, basically get the Avengers together. And it's a classic comics trope of having the misunderstandings lead to a fight that then leads to a team up. So he comes across the Hulk. The Hulk is doing his thing. He, uh, he, he does some shenanigans here where he puts a, you know, mystery illusion dynamite, the Hulk, uh, you know, on train tracks. The Hulk's going to save the train. And uh, he inadvertently smashes into the bridge, breaks it, saves the train, and, and helps the humans. But uh, the humans uh, suspect the Hulk, and they, they believe he's framed, basically, for this bad act. Very much on brand for the Hulk. Uh, the uh, Rick Jones and the Teen Brigade, uh, which was a thing uh, back in the day, um, they were you know out to kind of help the, the Hulk out. So... They contact the Fantastic Four because they know that Reed Richards will be able to help, you know, clear the Hulk's name and get things back in the right place. But their request is rerouted to Thor because Loki's trying to set up this fight. So Thor springs into action, uses his cane, out he goes, and, you know, there, there they go. So meanwhile, we introduce the Ant-Man and the Wasp, 
who are they're out hanging out on on creatures because that's what they do and you know they they're they, they basically shoot themselves out of a cannon so you know it makes sense and iron man's getting his his outfit on and he's going to uh, also check this thing out so everybody's kind of converging on this one spot and the teen brigade learns that the fantastic four aren't going to have time to really solve this this issue but by reed's calculations others have picked up on this and in comes thor iron man and ant man and the wasp and they're going to try and unravel this mystery of the hulk so off they go, and they they uh, they they chase after him. There's more tricks by Loki as he gets Thor to uh, basically chase after an illusion, not hear some of the uh, you know the the team up the plans that are going on, and you know he Thor begins to suspect Loki's at the bottom of this. So let me pause here for a second. I mean, this is this is interestingly enough, we are say eight pages in, and we've managed to set up the villain, the threat. We've got some amazing artwork by Kirby all over the place. Just some some really nice classic Marvel uh, Kirby art, and we've got multiple team members all coming to one place. They've got a mission. We've had a guest appearance by the Fantastic Four. Um, it's amazing how much we've gone through eight pages, and that's what a lot of comics do in you know in, the, in our new decompressed storytelling. It's astounding how uh, incredible it is that 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 basically they they take. 30 pages to do what Kirby and, and Lee would do in eight. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, anyway, so uh, meanwhile, the Hulk is dressed up like a clown for some reason. Um, he's taken refuge in a traveling circus. Why is he doing that? Nobody's quite sure. But, uh, you know, fortunately, kind of Clark Kent style, he's put some face paint on, and uh, nobody suspects this giant creature who's green is the Hulk. And he's, uh, he's, he's basically doing some, you know, some fun circus stuff. But Ant-Man and the Wasp are not fooled, and they immediately kind of trap Hulk and start to attack him, and they they you know they they do some various things, and and the crowd's kind of not in on it. Uh, but the Hulk, showing some intelligence, picks up a little like a uh, a bellows and starts blowing Ant-Man away uh, or Wasp away, which is kind of comical. Uh, but then in comes Iron Man, and so they're they're basically trying to capture the Hulk. He he flies away, ruins the whole circus like a like you know what a clown, and they they chase off into the desert. So Hulk is making pretty much short work of Iron Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. He's he's clever. Um, he's he does a little jumping trick, uh, Top Gun style to kind of get behind <laughs> the Iron Man. Um, you know it's amazing how many movies have have used this. In, uh, in you know in, in later years, I, Avengers truly was the tentpole of everything. But uh, Thor has gone back to Odin to kind of say, hey, you know, Loki's doing some trickery. What do we got going on here? And uh, he's sent on a little quest, and he he gets in there, and, and there's there's a volcano and more magic and more more chaos, and he basically goes to fight Loki and gets trapped up with trolls and, and other things and, and illusions. So we get several pages of Thor Loki fighting and some really kind of back and forth of, you know, Loki doing tricks and Thor capturing him and, and so on. And so finally Thor becomes victorious and he heads off to earth to kind of settle these events and, and get everybody on the right track. Once again, now we're, we're at page 18 of the comic and we've gotten uh, now in the team's been assembled We've learned all about them. We got background. They've had a fight with the Hulk. We've had multiple back and forth. Thor has had a pretty prolonged fight with Loki. And we are back to the action again as Iron Man is still chasing down Hulk this time to some kind of automobile factory of sorts. And everybody's getting a chance to do a little bit of what they do best. Uh, Iron Man's trying to, you know, basically using his engineering skills to make a little grapple. And he's kind of trying to outthink the Hulk. The Hulk's doing some strategy. Thor shows up with Loki, but Loki uh, quickly is able to, you know, clear up the, well, they're, they're able to clear up the understanding, but Loki quickly gets away and uh, he's, he starts some, some, you know, kind of radioactive mess and he's going to uh, he really, now he's, now he's got the heroes on the ropes and this gives Ant-Man and the Wasp the ability to kind of sneak in, throw Loki into a lead line tank and trap him. And of course he's, he's not going to be trapped at all. But, you know, it's it's fine. Um, why Thor needed to bring Loki to Earth for all this is a bit of a question, but, you know, who knows? And Iron Man gets the idea, hey, why not work as a team? Um, 
or sorry, I'm, 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 I'm jumping ahead. You got to give credit where credit's due because this is something that will come up in Avengers issues many times over the years. The Wasp says each of us has a different power. Hey, wouldn't this make sense? Uh, let's combine our forces. We can be unbeatable as a team. And Iron Man's like, yeah, it sounds good. And Thor's like, cool. Uh, Hulk is, I'm, I'm sick of being hunted and hounded. I'd rather be with you than against you. This would last all of like two issues. Um, it would not, this, this, unfortunately, that joining would not stay put. And they come up with the Avengers and they're off they go. So 22 pages of a pretty much a, a what would undoubtedly be at least two, three, ten arcs um, of comics. And it's amazing back in the early days how much comics changed. In issue number two, um, Ant-Man unveils the Giant Man persona. They, you know, fight uh, this uh, the, the Space Phantom. And he's he's also pretending to be the Hulk. So there's there's some stuff there. And this, this pisses off Hulk and he decides to quit the team in issue two. And so... It, it, it's amazing in if you go six issues of the first six issues of the Avengers, um, we got the introduction of, of Namor, we had Captain America, we had more back and forth of the Hulk. By the time you get to, you know, really issue six, we've introduced uh, Baron Zemo and the Masters of Evil. And we've got Captain America on the team and we've, we've got just uh, a, a ludicrous amount. So if you think of six issues of the storyline, we got a new costume for Iron Man, we got the Giant, giant Man costume, we got Captain America being returned to the present, and 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 Rick Jones helping him out, and we've got the Melter, and we've got Baron Zemo. I mean, Swordsman, it just the Black Knight, uh, just just a ridiculous amount of things um, all happening in a very very short amount of time. So pretty crazy. Um, it is. It is absolutely astounding as you look through the decades how much that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby managed to accomplish in just a handful of issues. The, this was uh, pretty much, you know, how storytelling. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of this era because it, you got a lot in a comic, and you 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 don't get anywhere close to that. I mean, if you if you go 12 issues, you had uh, Wonder Man and Kang and Immortus and. Um, and, and just <laughs> count nefaria. I mean, the amount of sheer characters and action being packed into issues every month was astounding. So this was where it started and clearly set a legacy that uh, would would continue for, you know, now several years and several billion dollars. It's not hard to imagine uh, why you look at the first Avengers movie and you see Loki doing his tricks and getting characters to fight each other and, and kind of this misunderstanding of the Hulk and all that. This template of how to do a comic is evergreen and would certainly survive and, and last for many, many decades. I mean, at least four decades of, of comics before we start to get into the new era, which we're going to get into. So did you like this issue? What do you think? Um, have you, I, I mean, I'm assuming most of you read the original Avengers issue. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? But let me know what you think and and what you think, how you think it relates to other comics that have come out. I'm, I'm curious to hear it. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch. We're gonna do all the Avengers issues here, uh, all the number one issue of Avengers here, I should say. Thanks for listening.